thank you Black Rose Dragon for this amazing topic. Uh, they specifically are asking about parts of a dungeon or a explorable area that should mm -hmm. be uh, explored, but don't have to be, i.e. the optional paths. Now, this is a level design question, and a lot of times we talk about the critical path, which is the thing that the player has to go through in order to get through the level. The critical path doesn't have to literally be a line. I mean, we've talked about critical paths before, and they can be ambiguous. It's just, here's where you start, here's where you have to end up, how you get there is a critical path. Optional paths are different, aren't they? Yes, they are. Optional paths can uh, lead you to, uh, to treasure, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or to gaining additional information, mm -hmm, yep. um, part of a side quest. Uh, hey, even... Um, even meeting someone new right you know optional character right exactly and the optional paths don't have to be something that is um they don't have to be optional in the sense that the player sees them and chooses to go down them an optional path oh. can be something that has to be discovered let's talk about the original legend of zelda the 8-bit game okay let's talk about that one in the original okay. Legend of Zelda, a lot of the optional stuff was found by randomly bombing walls or burning down bushes with candles or touching tombstones and hoping that ghosts don't kill you. <laughs> That's yeah. how the optional paths there work. Now, just because something was done during the 8-bit era doesn't mean it's the way you do it nowadays. We've talked about how it was done then. It's not always how you should do it now, but the concept is good where you're exploring and you're unlocking these optional paths. So that's one thing to consider. If you want your optional path to be something that's, well, requires player skill, have it be that they have to actually explore. Maybe there's sections of the wall that have small cracks on them. So you place a bomb there, or you have your All Might character punch it with his super fist. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, maybe it's a tree that you have to chop down, and they have to learn that certain trees that have certain looks to them are the ones that you can chop down and have hollows with stuff in them. Things like that. Uh -huh. Things like that. Not the only thing you can do, though. And remember... No! Go ahead. Go ahead. I was saying optional paths don't always have to go to treasure. Like Teal said, they can go to world lore or environmental storytelling, etc. Okay. So... No. You left me a little bit of crumbs to talk about, so let me talk about my crumbs. Sorry. <clears throat> Optional paths don't have to be a physical place that you, you walk down or that you discover. An optional path can also be environmental storytelling, like going to a series of computer terminals, hacking them. Yes, I'm talking about Fallout. Right. And reading the, uh, the notes that are on that terminal whether it's a journal entry or uh, some other bit of information. And you hack a whole series of terminals and it leads you down a story. Right. And at the end of that path, there's a reward. Yeah. Uh, those type of optional paths that aren't a specific path can be called a side area. I mean, at this point, we're just getting into the wording of what you call something, but the idea is the same. Anything that where the player does not have to go there in order to complete that objective of that part of the game is considered to be an optional path. That's just the lingo. But it could be a side area, a side world, like uh, the, the Star Road in Super Mario World. That's Oh, yeah, the Star Road. That's an yeah. optional path. You don't ever have to go uh -huh. down it to beat Bowser. Um, and like Kiro mm -hmm. says, yes, that's a, another good idea is that in the Wild Arms games, certain skills that characters acquire during the game allow them to open up different optional areas and different optional paths. So that's the same thing as Link's candle or his bombs. You acquire something over the course of the game's main narrative, main story, mm -hmm. main gameplay, and that allows you to open uh -huh. up your optional whatever. So I guess in a way, the game developer has full control over what areas the player can and cannot go through. Well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, it the, the whole point is to encourage exploration because you you the developer are putting a lot of time into building your world absolutely 100%. so you you want the players to explore every inch of it mm -hmm. so that's what optional paths are yes it's encouraging that exploration exploration of story of place of time yes very good idea 
example, very good example of time because your optional path can give you world lore that helps mentally prepare you for what's coming next, even if it's something that you can't actually influence. Like, for example, right. some of the stuff you can do in the Dragon Age games. You know, going through some places, right. like, specifically in Origins, give you more knowledge of how the Blight works, of how yeah. the Archdemon functions. You can't stop the Blight. You have to kill the Archdemon. It will most likely cost someone a life or make Kieran get born. But that's unavoidable. But what is yeah. what you can do is learn. And that's a really good, compelling reason for a story-driven game. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. Now, earlier on in the chat, uh, Roxy said that feeling of, I want to find the optional paths before the critical path locks me out of going back. And if that's the kind of game you're doing, then yes, you can create that feeling. And the, you want to create that can. feeling by having, this is my way of doing it, is you have the entrance, the transitional point, whether it be a, an archway or a path or an NPC talking or a teleportation. It doesn't even have to be physical. It could literally just no, be some, be yeah, it could be somebody talking about the riverbed, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, um, here's a good one that has absolutely zero indicators of a dungeon. Uh, let's say that your main path is going through, your critical path is going through a forest. And yeah. while you're going through a forest, you come across a dam, a beaver dam. All right? right. And let's say this world is like Narnia where beavers talk because talking beavers are amazing. Um, they are. And you go into this area, you see the dam, you see the beavers, and the beaver is saying, I got I got some problems here because because uh, unfortunately, even though I want to keep my dam because it protects my family, uh, the, the monsters up north, uh, the, the people up north are, are really causing a lot of damage to our ecosystem. Okay, whatever. So you go up north and you find the loggers there and they give you a compelling reason to destroy the dam. Well, now you're faced with a moral dilemma. This has nothing to do with the main path. Do you destroy the beaver dam, you monster, or do you leave it? Well, if you destroy the beaver dam, it opens up an optional area where you get a bunch of cool stuff. Maybe really good high level gear or whatever. Yeah. So that's um also you, you talk about that's a good example. I was thinking of other games where mm -hmm. um you you go through an area mm -hmm. and there are certain certain things that are available. Right. But then you do something and you change that area. Yes. Like uh you, you break a dam and so the water comes rushing through. Right. The wet and so right. That that covers up the area that that you you used to be able to go in, but it opens up this other area that was underwater. Exactly because when you break the dam, it changes the wetlands into a non-wetlands because all that water mm -hmm. that rushes down to the basin. The basin was an explorable area. Now it's a lake. So you've yeah. changed the topography, the geography of the game world by making mm -hmm. a single choice. But it has nothing to do with the main quest because you're trying to go over mm -hmm. like the bridge to get to the castle. That's beautiful. Yeah. I love that. And I love mm -hmm. games that do that because I get I this I get this feeling that I as the player am influencing the world when I want to. Yes. However, yes. however, it can be overdone. If you're not creating an yeah. open world game, you need to watch out that you don't have so many optional areas, optional paths <laughs> that the player gets yeah. saturated. Now, if this is an open world game, just Shut the fuck up, Steel. Like, literally. Have as much content as you feel you can create that the player can actually mm -hmm. play in. You're going to get a lot of people making fun of you if it's like Skyrim, and every time you talk to somebody, you get a new quest. <laughs> but if you're creating a game that's more linear or semi-linear, like a Souls game, for example, make sure you don't yeah. have too many optional areas. Player choice is a good thing, but choice saturation pulls away from your main story and that can cause the player to go, okay, so I've got these six quests over here and these 12 quests over here. And, you know, I'm going to do these quests over here and then I'm going to stop playing for the night. And maybe they don't come back because they don't really feel like your game has a direction. Yeah. Balancing act, people. Balancing act. Balancing act. I, I do want to say that Dragon Age Inquisition mm -hmm. did it very well. Oh, yes. You, you, you had a semi-open world concept yes. where you had the... The, the the council table laid out yes the war table and then you can choose which destinations you go mm -hmm. to and stuff happened there yeah 
Yeah, exactly. And I do remember this this one thing where um, you change the water level. Yeah. Of a place. And it makes them it makes so, it different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So basically, to kind of sum this up, when you're creating your optional paths, try to incentivize the player other than with loot, but also show them ways that they can access it other than just going down a different path. Um, Whether you decide to create obstacles that require skills or items to unlock, whether you make it part of a quest or quest line, whether you make it something that their actions change the geography of the world, whatever, Uh make it so that when they go through your optional path, not only does it help them in a mechanical level, but increases the enrichment of your world. Yeah. All right, everyone. Well, if you like what you saw, lay the smack down that like button below, subscribe to our channel, consider supporting us on Patreon, connect us over Facebook, Twitter, Discord, and we'll see you in the next video. See you next time.